Welcome students. Today we are continuing from part 3. If you haven't seen part 3, check out the link in the description down below. Today's video, we will cover part 4, which is about ecology, interdependence, energy, and dynamics. This is the last video for this MSAT series. Make sure to subscribe to receive the next upcoming series by turning on the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Let's start solving these questions. Let's start with this question. Food chains are the most important part of ecology to study the energy flow through an ecosystem. Which of the following is not true about the flow of energy through ecosystem? What is the flow of energy? It's the sequence of transfers of matter and energy in the form of food from organism to another organism, like what will happen in food chain and food web. Let's read the choices. The first one, the higher the trophic level, the lower the energy available, and that's right, 100%, it will decrease. B, a single organism can feed at several trophic levels to take energy from, because Simply, logically, we have herbivores and carnivores and omnivores, and that's right. C. Many food chains interlink to make food web for better flow of energy, and that's right. Let's move to D. The tritivorous can feed at all trophic levels to obtain energy except producers. How come? The tritivorous, like earthworm, mites, crab, they feed on only dead bodies. Even they are not like decomposers. Decomposers like fungi and bacteria, they will break down first, then they will eat. But for the tritivorous, they feed only on dead bodies. So the right answer, and me, I mean not the true statement, it's D. Now this question. Why tell deer live in many areas of the United States, while the grazing deer provide a serene vista for many homeowners, other homeowners have started to resent their destructive presence on landscaping. A recent study was done by Small Homeowners Association in San Antonio, Texas. The study targeted a gated subdivision of 100 acres. The deer population for the first five years was an estimate by homeowners and the results are plotted in the graph below. According to this data, the white-tailed deer are, let's see, option A, are in the lag phase of their growth. If we look at the graph, within the first five years, I mean from 1998, till 2003, we cannot see a lag phase, as after lag phase comes a log phase, but that is not observed here. So, option A cannot be right. Now, option B. Have no natural predators. That makes sense. Let me explain it. As we can see, there is some form of a predation since the population size decreases initially in the first five years here. Nevertheless, as we can see in the question, it mentions that homeowners resent their destructive presence on landscaping. This proves that this form of a predation is caused by the destruction of the deer's habitats and is man-made predation. However, this does not mean this is natural predation because natural predation means only other animals feeding on the deer which is not occurring. Hence, option B is right, but let's look at the other options too. Now, let's move to option C. Have reached their carrying capacity. Actually, it's not showing in the graph that the population reached to carrying capacity. So once it's not there, I cannot assume that. So we can exclude option C. Moving to D. Exhibit a sigmoid growth curve. 
Let's see. In the first five years, we notice a couple of death phases and stationary phases as it's a clear from 1998 till 2000 and from 2001 till 2002. But we do not observe a proper sigmoid curve or bell-shaped curve, which begins with the lag phase, then log phase, then stationary phase, followed by a death phase. But in these five years, we do not see that taking place. Hence, option D is wrong. So, the right answer is B. Have no natural predators, as I explained before. Now, the second question. Organisms that comprise the greatest, comprise here means represent, the greatest mass of living substance in a terrestrial food chain are. Let's see the choices. A. Decomposers such as bacteria, come on, this is on dead bodies, so blindly this is wrong. B. Producers such as grasses, plant, this is makes sense, because even their source of energy is the sun, endless. C. Primary consumers such as sheep, do you think that would be enough for the rest of the food chain or the food web? D. Secondary consumers such as a human, same with C. So, scientifically, it is B, the producers. Let's see this question. Pyramid below shows all the four trophic levels in a food chain with the amount of energy available at the first trophic level, which is 33,000 kilocalorie square meter. Which of the following represents the amount of energy of the tertiary consumer if only 15% of this energy is transferred in each trophic level? Well, most of the time, and what we learned about it, the 10% rule, but once they ask you to make it 15%, no problem in this. So they are looking for the tertiary consumer. The tertiary consumer here is A, if we assume these are the producers, then C, the first consumer, B, second, and A is tertiary. Let's see how we will solve this question. Now, let's do the math and calculate. D is the first trophic level. Amount of energy is 33,000 kilocalories square meter. Now, we will multiply it by 15%. And what we received is 4,950 kilocalories square meter. This amount of energy will be transferred to the first consumer, which is the C trophic level. Again, we will repeat the same calculations and multiply this amount of energy times 15 percent. And what we will receive now, amount of energy transferred to B trophic level, the secondary consumer, which is 742.5 kilocalorie square meter. Now, moving to the tertiary consumer, and here we will find the answer by again multiplying it by 15%, and what we received is 111.4 kilocalorie square meter in a trophic level, the tertiary consumer. So, the right answer here is C. So, trophic level A, which means the tertiary consumer, will receive 111 kilocalorie per square meter. Now, this question. When a seagull eats a big fish, which eats a small fish that eats water fleas, which is supported by phytoplankton. The water fleas are, let's read the choices. A, top consumers in the food chain? Sure not. Producers, phytoplankton is the producer. Secondary consumer? Sure not, the small fish. Primary consumer, yes, because it feeds on the producers, the phytoplankton. So, D 
is the right answer. Let's read this question. Which type of factors is this interaction regarding the regulation of the population graph? Let's analyze the graph. It's versus the time and the population density. Gazelle population against lion population. Let's see. If we look at the gazelle population, it's already increasing without the presence of lion. Now, once we have the lion, what will happen with the gazelle population? It will decrease. Again here, once we finish from the predator, which is a lion, the gazelle population will increase. Once the lion population available, I mean the predators, again, gazelle population will decrease. Let's read the choices. Is it related to human activities factors at all? We have to relate it to the question. Is it abiotic factors? We are not discussing abiotic factor here. Is it the density independent factors like volcanoes, natural disaster, or diseases at all? So, is it density dependent factors depends on other populations here? Yes, because we are talking about the predator, which is the lion population. So the right answer here is D. Now this question, which of the following examples has the greatest effect on decreasing the biodiversity on Earth? Let's read the choices. A. The climate changes, sure it will affect, but is it the greatest? Let's compare it with other choices. B. The depletion of the ozone layer, sure it will affect because that will let the UV light go and comes in and um, the global warming will increase. But that much effect the greatest? Let's continue then. C. The intensive farming and raising of certain species also it will affect and it will decrease the biodiversity on Earth. But let's read the last choice. The destruction of the natural habitat of living organism I think this will be the large and the greatest effect because we are destroying the whole habitat, including the resources, and that will affect the reproduction of these organisms. Please take care. Not all right statement is the right answer. Choose the best. I think the best answer here is D. Let's read this question. According to the pattern that is shown the image below, two different species cannot occupy the same what? It's very clear we have a yellow bird and we have a black bird. Let's read the choices. Choice A. Traffic level. Actually, traffic level is defined as the position of an organism in the food chain and I doubt that related to the image. Let's move to choice B. Ecosystem. An ecosystem consists of all the organisms and the physical environment with which they interact. But here is not showing us that they are interacting. Let's move on to choice C. Choice C, habitat. What is habitat? It's the place or environment where a plant or animal naturally or normally lives and grows. Makes sense? Maybe? But let's go for D to decide which is the right choice. D. Niche. Niche is the match of a species to a specific environmental condition. What does that mean? It describes how an organism or population responds to the distribution of resources and competitors and how it turns alters those same factors. I think D is the right answer, as we can see here how the yellow bird occupied the ground and the black bird confined only on the tree. So the right answer here is D. Now in this question, it seems that we need to calculate something. According to the pyramid of energy below, 
which represent the food chain, what will be the amount of energy obtained by a snake? That means they are looking for the trophic level number four, starting by grass, grasshopper, frog, then moving to snake. Now, how we will calculate? It's according to the 10% rule. It's only about 10% of energy stored as a biomass in a trophic level is passed from one level to the next one. Let's see how we can calculate. Here we go. Once we want to calculate and they gave us this information, the grasses that mean the producers, they have 10,000 kilocalories, we will use the 10% rule, the first one. If we move to grasshopper, we will find the 10% of the 10,000 is around 1,000 kilocalories. So the grasshopper will obtain 1,000 kilocalories. Moving to frog, number two, we will times it by 10%. So the frog will obtain how much? 100 kilocalories. Finally, we're about to go to snake. Now, Snake will take only 10% of the 100, which means 10 kilocalorie. Let's go and read the choices. According to the calculations that we did, the right answer is D. The snake, the fourth trophic level, will obtain only 10 kilocalorie. Here we have this question. In the food chain below, the hawk could eat either the snake or the mouse and thus could represent which two different levels of the food chain that start by the rose posh and end by earthworm. A. Producer and the primary consumer? Sure not, because this is that we'll talk about the rose bush and the grasshopper. It's not related. B. Primary and secondary consumer. Primary is the grasshopper and the secondary is mouse. But we are talking about the hawk. C. Quaternary consumer and the detritivore. Quaternary, yes, the hawk here is the quaternary, but detritivore is the earthworm. Now, let me highlight a point. Maybe it's not related directly to the question, but what is the meaning of detritivore? Detritivore, it's the type of organism that will eat the dead bodies. Decomposers that will break down the dead bodies, the organic material. So there's a difference, even if they will come at the end of the food chain. Sorry, let's go back for the choices. D, tertiary and the quaternary consumer. That's right, I'll explain it to you. If the hawk ate the snake, let's count it, rose bush, this is the plant, this will be the producer, primary consumer grasshopper, secondary consumer mouse, and the third consumer is the snake. So if the hawk ate the snake, it will be quaternary. And if the hawk ate the mouse, it will replace the snake and it will be tertiary. So the right answer here is D, tertiary and quaternary consumer. Hopefully you will understand that. This is a nice question. Interactions among species in an ecosystem defined as positive backslash negative would be characteristic of. We learned about symbiotic relationships and interactions. In order to explain it in a specific way, come with me, then we'll come and answer it in an easy way. Let's explain it here. Population interactions. We have two species interact with each other. First relationship, mutualism. Both of them, they will get benefit. Positive, positive. The second one, competition. Both of them will lose something. Will affect each other in a negative way. So negative, negative. Predation. Sure, one will get benefit the predator and the other one is the victim negative parasitism parasites will get benefit and the host will impact it in a negative way commensalism this relationship 
one will get benefit and the other one will not affect it. Amenzalism. Amenzalism, something weird. This species will never get benefit even though will harm the other. According to this table, and please take a screenshot, keep it in your iPad or your folder, and let's go back to the question to answer it. So after learning about the interactions among species in the table, we can answer this easily. Both predation and mutualism, sure not. Predation only, no. We have another relation that make it positive and negative. Mutualism only, come on, it should be positive and positive. D, both predation and parasitism, this is the right answer. So predation and parasitism, both of them will get benefit, but the other one will be impact in a negative way. This is an easy question. You should answer it in a short period of time. To preserve the biosphere for future generations, humans must do something. Before reading the choices, what's the definition and what's the meaning of biosphere? Actually, biosphere is made up of all the parts of Earth where life exists, all ecosystems. Let's read the choices. A. Put all wild animals in game preserves. That's good, but that will not cover the whole idea of biosphere. B. Make use of technology to develop new herbicides. Again, it's another good point. But again and again, it's not covering the biosphere idea. C. Settle more people in land away from the coasts. Okay, where is the point of that? Let's move to D. Understand how living things interact with their environment. That's good. Actually, biosphere extends from the deepest root system of trees to the dark environments of oceans for all organisms' interaction with all ecosystems. So the best answer here is what? It's D, to understand how living things interact with their environment. This question about food chain. Let's see. All the following are correct about food chains except a. Energy is lost at each tropic level, and that's right, that's what happened. B. Producers are always at the bottom of any food chain, exactly 100%. C. Bacteria and fungi act as decomposers that recycle nutrients, sure. D. Pesticides tend to be, sorry for this typo, it should be E, tend to be concentrated at the producer level, because the producers have the largest mass in a food chain. Okay, and what is the relation now? Yes, it's a right statement. Maybe he's talking about pesticides. But regarding food chain, food chain it's, describes who eats whom in the wild. That's it. So regardless if the statement is right or not, but it's not related to the food chain. It will not affect it at all. So the right answer for this question is... D. Now this question. Wally bats sleeps very comfortably inside a pitcher plant that does not contain digestive enzymes. The feces from the bats are released into the pitcher plant trap where nutrients in the feces are absorbed and provide the plant with the nitrogen it needs. What a nice example we have. Which of the following best describes the relationship between the pitcher plant and the woolly bat? Interactions. It seems both of them, they get benefit. For the bat will sleep and release its waste. For the plant will get benefit from the waste, the feces, I mean. So both of them get benefit without looking at the choices directly. What comes to my mind is the mutualism. But let's see the choices. Is it competition? Sure not. They are not competing for something. It's not a negative relationship. Commensalism. One will get benefit and the other one will not be affected. But both of them here, they are getting benefit. So it's not right. Mutualism, that what I support. 
دي parasitism no one will be affected in a negative way or harmed so the right answer here is C mutualism finally we reach the last question of ecology part which of the following statements is or are true for the population in the graph before reading the three statements let's try to analyze the graph we have on x-axis the time and on y-axis the population size what does that mean we are studying here the change of population size over time that's good but we will not forget that we have the carrying capacity what is a carrying capacity carrying capacity happens when the maximum population size is reached for a given area with limited resources and that logic okay this graph actually if you studied ecology called logistic growth because we have another graph we call it exponential growth that one without limitations without carrying capacity so the first statement it is logistic growth is right second statement the population grows at a steady rate sure not it's very clear it's not a steady actually there is an increasing in the growth rate three when the population reaches the carrying capacity it stops growing yes they are still alive because we have unlimited resources it will not exceed it so the right answer should include one and the three statement which is d this concludes the fourth part of our msat paper we have covered ecology this is the end of the MSAT biology series. Make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell to receive more videos from Mrs. Biology, as we will be starting a new series soon. Thanks for watching.